1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 49 to, excuse me, 45 to 49. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning at verse 45 to 49. It says, thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam became a life-given spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Father, bless your word today. Minister to your people. Let this moment in the service, whether we're here in person or watching virtually, let it be a life-changing moment. As always, I pray that you will think with my mind and speak with my vocal cords so that your people will be edified. In turn, you will be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you just give God a praise before you take your seat? Be seated, please, in the presence of the Lord. Want to encourage you this morning to find the courage to change. Finding the courage to change. There's a sense in the body of Christ that perhaps a lot of us, honestly, though we talk about a transformation life or transformed life, I should say, though we talk about a transformed life, in most cases, we may not really want people to be transformed by our actions, by our words. Sometimes we don't even believe that people have the opportunity to be transformed. That so many times we look at people and their past, what they have done, what they have said, and we have held it against them forever. Not knowing all of us have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. And no matter who you are, every one of us can change. But it takes courage to change. Our faith journey is really about evolving. It's about having the desire and the courage to become more of a reflection of God's will for our lives versus becoming what we feel or what other people and society wants us to be. This is very important that we need to understand that this faith journey that we're on is about us evolving, changing. We have to change. Every day, if we're in the Word of God, if we're, you know, submissive to the Holy Spirit, it brings us through this metamorphosis experience where we keep changing And sometimes we resist the change, but we have to find the courage to change. We have to see that our journey is more about becoming a reflection of who God wants us to be and not what we want to be based on our feelings and what society is forcing us to be. So we find here in the scripture, the apostle Paul talks about the natural man versus the spiritual man. And he made, it, he made it very clear 
that the first man, Adam, became a living being. In the beginning, when God created Adam, Adam was born of flesh. He knew no sin. However, he could not follow the instructions of God. He resisted it, and he listened to the prompting of Satan, and uh, as a result of that, all of us became victim to the spirit of disobedience. At the end of the day, the only reason why our lives are so jacked up is because of the spirit of disobedience. If we could just obey that one law, obey God and his commandments, then the rest of our lives will be okay. But we cannot get past obeying God, so therefore the spirit of disobedience will come in. And so Paul says this one human being, Adam, became a life giver, if you will. God put life in him, in his human body. And then he says that it was the natural that was first and then the spiritual. What he was really uh, taking the Corinthian church through was this transformation that need to take place in their lives that you are born naturally, but there has to come a time in your life where you go through that spiritual rebirth, where you go through that spiritual transformation, where it's, it's not about religion, it's not about trying to have a form of godliness. It's not about, okay, you know, saying you're a follower of Jesus Christ, but it's to have a real deep, honest transformation in your life, in your heart, is to change from that natural mindset to that spiritual mindset, to become more like Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The, the, the journey of a Christian is to become more like Christ and less of yourself in the world. And it takes courage to change, to become more like Christ. It's very easy to become yourself. It's very easy to become like the world. So the Apostle Paul is saying here in verse 47, the first man was born from the earth, a man of dust, and the second man from heaven. He's relating that to Jesus and Adam. Adam was born naturally, from the dust, from the dust. Remember, I think it was last week in the sermon I mentioned to you that, that Adam and Eve were the only two people who were born not in the womb of a woman. Adam, didn't, Adam and Eve was the only person to this day who never had a mother. Never. Never had a mother. Scripture says, God took him from the dust of the earth and from Adam, he created a woman. So Paul is saying here, you have this natural man, Adam, who came and then you have this natural man, Jesus, though he was the son of God, was born in human flesh to bring about a spiritual message or a spiritual life for the rest of us. And verse 48 says, as was the man of the dust, so also are those who are of the dust. As the man of the dust, Adam, what did Adam do? He couldn't follow a simple instruction. Here, Adam, Here's a beautiful place. You've got everything you need. You don't have to go to a nine to five job. You don't have to worry about a mortgage. You don't have to worry about car payments. Don't even worry about health insurance because you'll never get sick. Don't, don't worry about retirement. And guess what, Adam? Don't even worry about aging. He 
he didn't have to worry about aging. We get scared when we look in the mirror. Come on now. You know, every birthday, you don't want to tell nobody your age, right? Because, I mean, the wrinkles are telling, right? Adam didn't have to worry about that. All God asked him to do was just obey his commandments. And he couldn't do it. And what Paul is saying, like Adam, you're not like, just like Adam. We can't follow the Word, the Bible. It's a struggle for all of us. So like the man of the dust, so are we. Inconsistent. Never satisfied. Always listening to the prompting of the devil and never God. And when we get in trouble, guess who we run to? It may happen, it may happen, it may happen, I don't know. But I have never seen or heard of anybody who gets in trouble and run to Satan to pray and ask him to help them. Have you? I've never heard of anybody praying to the devil. Now that you get me in this trouble, get me out of here. No. We always go to God. We always disobey him but end up going to him, asking him to get us out of trouble. The Apostle Paul clearly shows us that the physical man should display the characteristics of human nature. He's not saying to us that we shouldn't be human because we are people of the dust. He's not telling us to be so spiritually minded like these religious folks that we were never born of a woman? Could there some people on the planet who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ and you would think they ain't never done anything wrong? And here it is, you're trying to live the faith life and you're struggling with it. You know, maybe you're struggling with with, with nicotine. You're struggling with drinking drugs. And, you know, these people look at you like... You need to come here, let me cast the devil out of you in Jesus' name about you drinking and you smoking and you're doing all of this because all they have done is they've categorized sin. The same person who's trying to cast out smoking out of you and drinking out of you is the same person who don't know how to tell the truth. So while you're laying hands on me, let me lay hands on you at the same time. You cast out my devil, I cast out yours. We can do this together, tag team. (laughs) We can do this together. I bind you, you bind me. I loose you, you loose me. (laughs) All of us must understand that we do have the characteristics of what a human should be like. We get up every day, we get tired, we get exhausted. We're flesh and blood. However, at the same time, we should also display the characteristics of Christ. This is where the struggle is. We're human, yet we are children of the Most High God. How do we balance both? We're men and women of dust, but we are children of God. And sometimes we we struggle. How do we change from this human being craving to live a sinful life to this spiritual being, to this person who we are made in Christ Jesus? to this person who follows Christ, to this person who live up to the expectation of the word of God. How do we do that? Let's look at verse 48 again and verse 49 of the text this morning. It says, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as the man 
of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. In verse 49, just as we have borne the image of man, watch this, just as much as we bore the image of a man, it says also bear the image of the heavenly father. So you walk around every day knowing who you are. In this case, I'm Henry. I walk around every day. I'm Henry. I'm male. I know who I am, right? I know my age. I know my hobbies. I know what I like. I know know my weaknesses and my strength. So I walk around in human form knowing who I am. Am. I understand that. But what Paul is now saying, Henry now must understand speaking about you. You know your name. I'm just using my name for example here, point of reference. You, on the other hand, must also understand that Henry is walking, but he's not walking in the lust of his flesh in the desires of his heart, but Henry now is walking out this faith journey, walking it in Christ. Mm. That I'm walking it out in Christ. Oh, let's be straight. Henry's gonna screw up sometimes. Henry's gonna make mistakes. Henry's going to do dumb stuff. But here's the thing about God's grace. Ah. Oh, that word gets me all the time. God's grace is sufficient to keep you. Every time you feel as if you can't make it, every time you feel as if it's a struggle, it's very hard to live up to being a Christian. God's grace somehow sustains you and keep you from falling. Can somebody give him a praise in the house today? So what the Apostle Paul is encouraging us to do is simply this, to find the courage to change our, watch this, natural cravings to the desires, if you will, of the things that God wants for us. That as you're living out your life every day, it's no longer, I want, I want, I want, I want, but it's more of, Whatever your will, God, is. Whatever your will, God. Whatever your will for my life is, God. That's what I want to do. I want to change this natural man. I want him to go through this metamorphosis experience like a, like a caterpillar that where, where all of a sudden this creepy, crawling creature who doesn't quite get it, doesn't, doesn't know the magnitude of his or her potential. Gradually, God, you're changing me. Oh, people are talking about me. People are always, always willing to point and say, I can't believe he did that. I can't believe she say that. But give me, give, just give me a chance. Just give me a break. Because God is just changing me. I'm telling you, it's it's, it's a tough transition. He's changing me. And through the process of my changing, you see the backside of me. I know you, you, you can't see what God is doing on the front end. I understand. And that's what you're dwelling on. But please be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. Do I have a witness in the building or streaming today? Just be patient with God. Somebody say, be patient with me. God's not through with you yet. So I believe, ladies and gentlemen, you and I must understand according to what the Apostle Paul is saying, change our natural cravings to desire the things God wants for us. And believe me, doing so will take a lot of courage. It will take a lot of courage to do it, to change from a person who is just living for yourself and society to living for God takes a lot of courage. Takes a lot of courage to be a faith believer. Takes a lot of courage to serve God. You don't, don't, don't you for one moment believe these religious people who make it look like, it's so easy to follow in Jesus. 
so easy, make you look stupid and dumb like you're just some heathen. Because they come to church and they just all, always walk in the straight line. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't believe them people. Don't believe them. I believe I have people in this room streaming who can be honest. Sometimes you really don't want to follow where Jesus is leading you. Can we just have some real people here? Sometimes he is pointing out a path to you and you're standing there and he has opened the door and he's saying, I want you to follow me. And you're like, say what? You want me to go there? Now, wait a minute, Jesus. Let's sit down and talk about this because you don't want to go because it's not an easy path in following Jesus Christ. But the moment you go through that transition, the moment he changes your way of thinking, the moment he changes who you are, it's easy then to follow him. First of all, you're going to be challenged, if you will, by your own rebellious beliefs and the pressure that society puts on you. Change is going to be hard because we all have religious beliefs. We all have these rebellious beliefs. Religious beliefs that are really not scriptural. And then we have these rebellious beliefs. All of us at some point in time have rebelled against God. We come up with reasons why we don't want to do certain things, so therefore we rebelled against God. And yet you are required, in spite of all of that, you are required, ladies and gentlemen, to go through a transition if you want more of a reflection of who God wants you to be. Regardless of the struggle you are having, it, it is required of you to go through that transition that's if you want to be more like him. So make no mistake about it. To walk through life successfully requires of you to have the courage to stand out and be different from those who are not on the same journey you're on. It takes the courage. It takes courage to do it. Some people need to understand that the reason why you and I are not on the, at the same level or at the same understanding is because you're on a different journey. And for us people of faith, it's going to take courage for us to change our mindset, to change from stop being intimidated by society and people and stand firm and be proud to be a follower of Jesus Christ. The faith journey is a process. Let me say it again. The faith journey is a process. Now, if you believe it, I want you to say it. The faith journey is a process. One more time. The faith journey is a process. It is a process. It takes courage to start the journey and it certainly will take courage to complete it. It's a process. You have to go through a lot this week to get to where you are. And you're gonna go through some more this coming week because our faith journey is a process. The faith journey takes you through a process of letting you go, letting you let go, I should say, of the old and embracing the new. That's what the faith journey is all about. Every day you're dying to yourself. It's about dying to your cravings, your flesh, your personal needs and submitting to the will of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, most of you will know this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now watch the transformation. The old are passed away. The old is gone according to the scripture and behold, all things have become new. Every one of us, we're going through this letting go of the old 
and grabbing a hold of the new. Having the courage to walk away from stuff that doesn't serve us any good. From things that will defile who we are as people and children of God. The courage to change. The courage to say, I'm going to let go of the old and reach for the new. And this is where it gets intense because you are between two options and you're in the middle and there's a force pulling you here and the Spirit of God is pulling you here. So how do you live in and, and, and this, um, this comfortable life as a Christian because you've been pulled in two different directions and you just can't figure out, yeah, yeah, I know what I want, I know what I feel, I know what looks good, I know what everybody else is doing, and I know what everybody else is saying, and I know how I feel, and I know, come on, I, I, I know, I know, and all the reasons you're coming up with, and the Spirit of God over here is saying, hey, but I know what God wants for you, I know where God wants you to be, and it's, it's the struggle is real. It's real. How do you do that? Are there any references in the Bible to encourage you that yes, you you can go through this transition and you can let go of the old and you can hold on to something new because you see, the old stuff, watch this, I'm almost through, the old stuff, the stuff that Satan is throwing at you and the things that he's putting in your head and the things that feels good and the, 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 the things of the world, you name it. And when I say the world, I have to be careful of this now because I don't want people to think that everything in the world is bad for you. No. I'm not telling you don't go to the beaches. I'm not telling you, well, to have a nice time to go out to dinner and to have, you know, take vacation and, and to do wonderful. Don't, don't listen to these crazy Christians, man, who make you think that everything in the world is bad. Come on now. You have one life on the planet. When you die, you're not coming back here. So everything that's good for you, you better get it now. Because when you die, you not getting it again. <laughs> Let's be wise now. Come on now. Well, you know, I don't want to, you know, the, you know this, these things of the world is ungodly. No. When you read your Bible, the, the things of the world, you will see the Bible explain to you clearly what those things are. And they're people who have struggled with how do I change from this natural man with the struggles that he has to go through to become all that God wants me to be. Moses had the courage to change from self-pity and shame to accepting that he was called, appointed, and anointed to be a leader. Moses struggled in human form with his insecurities. He stuttered. He felt incapable of becoming a leader. And not only that, Moses also had his name in the system. He was a murderer. He was a murderer. He saw someone hurt his, one of his native people, and Moses did not like it, and Moses plotted, and Moses killed the guy. Think about that. So not only did he have a personal issue with himself, Moses could not see himself standing before a crowd to speak. He could not articulate his words correctly. He stuttered and added to that, his name was in the legal system because he was a murderer. I want to talk to every man or woman in this place today 
Maybe you have done something in the past and your name is in the system. Maybe you've committed the crime. I'm not talking about somebody who has been wrongfully accused. Moses was not wrongfully accused. He killed the man. Some of us need to just be honest. Stop saying we didn't do it. Look at your neighbor and say, yes, you did. (laughs) You did it. You know you did it. (laughs) He was, Moses didn't lie. He did it. But God somehow, ooh, this is what I love about the gospel, the good news. See, this, this is the faith that I embrace. What I love about the gospel is God somehow tends to find the people that we tend to reject and say, if you are willing, I can use you. If God can use Moses, God can use you. Let me say it again. If God can use Moses, God can use you. But Moses was used by God, though he went through all those issues in his life. He had the courage to change, to say, though those things happened to me, hey, you know what? Let me get my act together because there's a king in me. There's a leader in me. I don't care what you have done, what you're dealing with right now. Sir, I I am here today to announce to you that there's a king on the inside of you. And if you allow God to bring that king out of you, I am telling you that king will come forth and become a great leader, not only to your family, but to society. There's a king in you. Rahab had the courage to change even though she did not have a good reputation. Rahab, her willingness to follow God caused her to become, watch this, the grandmother of King David ultimately making her a direct descendant of Jesus Christ. Rahab. Rahab, a harlot. Somebody, you know what we call that person in today's society. A person who had a very bad reputation. See, oh, thank you, Lord, man. Who would have thought that God would choose a harlot to become the part of the lineage of Christ. So stop giving excuses. Stop telling yourself that because of your past, because of the decisions that you have made, that God can't use you. I'm telling you, ladies, God can use your mistake to birth generations of greatness. That's exactly what happened to Rahab. She had the courage to say, you know what? Regardless of my reputation, uh, you know what, God, I embrace that you can use me. That out of my womb will come King David, ultimately will come the Messiah. That I'm willing for you to transform me. Ruth experienced a change in her life even after the death of her husband. She found the courage to stay connected to Naomi, and that led her to find new love. That though Ruth's husband died, you know the story, both Ruth and Naomi, both their husbands died, and even in the midst of that, she, this woman could have said, I'm giving up. I, 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 I just give up on all this. Forget it. Uh, uh, you know what? I've experienced death. So I'm just going to stay in self-pity. I'm never ever going to marry again. I don't ever believe in love again. Because death is painful. Think about this story of Ruth in your own personal life, sisters. 
What has killed your self-esteem? What has destroyed your inability, or your ability, I should say, to believe in love again? Some of you ladies, your love have died a long time ago. I'm not talking about the man. Your love. Some of you have experienced death in such a bad way that you have no idea that God is connecting you to something greater, yet you're willing to stay in the condition that you are. Ruth said no. She said to her mother-in-law, even when her mother-in-law was saying to her, just go back to your people. That's the easiest thing to do. She said, no, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Why? Because Ruth knew that God will connect you to some people. <laughs> when God connects you to someone, do not let go of that person until you get what God has for you. She decided to stay with Naomi. And her willingness to not allow the death of her husband, her past experiences, she could have stayed there thinking about what life used to be like. Man, when I was married to my husband, he did this for me. I used to live this. She could have continued that, but that's of the past, letting go of the old. And just by working, one day, she found a Boaz. So I really hope that you are not satisfied with where you are in life and that there is a greater calling on your life. I also hope that you are not using your life experiences as excuses to stay unchanged. Can't afford to do that. So I don't know what you are struggling with and what situations you are faced with in life, stop using those situations as excuses to not be greater. You have to have the courage to change. You have to have the courage to say, I deserve better. Some of you are settling for average and you're sitting there, you're watching and you know you deserve better, but you keep letting the devil play tricks on you and you keep letting the devil use people to lessen your value. You're going to have to have the courage to change. So every one of us can find reasons not to uh, desire better or greater for our lives. We all have, the, uh, uh, have something, I should say, in the past, you know, uh, to, to, to say, well, you know, we, we can't move forward. We can't believe God for greater. But you have to have the courage through the work of the Holy Spirit to be better. You are not a reflection of who God created you to be, even though you may have justified reasons for not being where you should be. You may have justified reason to say, I know, you know, I'm not what I used to be or should be, I should say, because of whatever it is. You may have justified reasons to say those things, but I'm telling you today, God is prompting you to change. Have the courage to say, my life will be better five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. I'll leave you with these three things. And then I'm going to pray for some of you, maybe not all of you, but there's some of you, I believe that God is speaking to you. And this message is to help you to develop that courage to get out of your comfort zone and change your life for the better. Here are three things you should do in order to find the courage to change. It's one thing for us to talk about having the courage to change, but what do I need to do? Here are the three things you need to do. Number one, you must admit that you are not a reflection of God's image for your life. That's the first thing. You have to admit, if you're satisfied with where you are and who you are, this sermon is not going to help you. But you have to admit that I am not who God 
wants me to be. I'm not a true reflection of his purpose for my life. And if you can admit that, then you'll have the courage to say, I need to change my life. That when you leave here today and you go to the, into the marketplace at your home, wherever it is, that you're going to say, I got to do better. I got to transform my life. This is not about my spouse. This is not about my children. This is not about society. This is about me. I must be my best self before I leave this planet. <laughs> then I have to have the courage to do that. Number two, you got to seek for the knowledge of who you should become. How do you find that knowledge the Word of God. You cannot look to society to tell you who you should become. You certainly can't depend on people. You got to get into the Word of God and the Word of God will show you who you are. You are fearfully and you're wonderfully made. You got to believe that. And finally, number three, you must be, and I love this, you must be disciplined and willing to go through the changes life takes you through. You must be disciplined. Oh, that's hard. Come on now. Here's another question. It's, it's a sidebar to the message, but there's a reason why I'm going to ask the question and connect it to the message. How many of you struggle to be consistent in the gym? <laughs> Okay, half of these people are not telling the truth, Lord, just so you know. It's a struggle. Can you be honest? There's so many times the heart is willing. <laughs> I mean, you know, you really want to do it, man. You really want to be consistent in the gym. But the mind, the flesh, Ah, I can't get up this morning. I can't do it. You know, and you get the energy every 1st of January. <laughs> People are posting on social media. I mean, we're a trip, man. We posted, we're in the gym and we're working now and we sweating and everything like by January 5th. <laughs> it's the same in our spiritual walk. Here's the truth. A lot of you are in this building today. You're streaming and you're in your spiritual gym, right? Because it's church. You heard the message and the worship songs and you're feeling mighty good, man. And you're on good pace, if you will. You're doing wonderful now. Here's the real struggle. It's when these doors are open. When you exit the spiritual gym, when you log off from the spiritual gym, and nobody's watching. Are you still going to be on the treadmill? Are you still going to have the proper diet? Are you, st are you still going to keep it up? When Tuesday, something prompts you to do something that goes against your gym regimen. Are you going to get off the treadmill and get to something else that will mess up your desires? You have to be disciplined. When God brings life circumstances, I don't care what it is, loneliness, depression, a breakup, a divorce, lack of funds, crazy kids, crazy job, whatever it is, when life presents to you something that's uncomfortable, you have to be disciplined enough, watch this, to say, whatever your will is, God, walk me through this. Walk me through this, change me. I'm a, I'm a person, I like to talk, I like, God, that person is testing my faith right now. 
that boss on the job is really testing me. That co-worker's really testing me. That family member's really testing me. That uncle, that auntie of mine is really testing me. That person who's got some money for me and won't pay me back and acting funny, God, you, they're really testing me. But in the process of my journey, teach me how to become more like you. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you that I've done my part to share with you people what they need to hear in this hour. It's for them now to respond. You're in the building and man, you needed this message today and you need someone to pray with you. I'll be the first to stand with you and pray with you. I'll be the first to help you understand that you can change but it takes courage. What I want to know this morning, if you have the courage in this building to move from your seat and come down to the front of this stage so I can pray with you that if God can bring Henry and the rest of us through, that you can get through it too. For those of you who are streaming, identify yourself. If you're saying this message was for you, Maybe you just need to say, I received that message. Please pray for me. While they're coming down, I want you to say, just please pray for me, Pastor, because I want to pray for you. I really do want to pray for you this morning. I think this is the greatest hour for the believer because Jesus is our hope. And if you have the courage to let him change you with the situations of life, I'm telling you, you'll walk out this faith journey successfully. Yes, you can. You can do this. You can do this if you believe in the power of the Word of God. They're still coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, squeeze your way in. Squeeze your way in. Squeeze your way in. Pastor Morgan, Pastor Morgan, come. Sing it, sing it, sing it. They're still coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I surrender. Come on, give him your life. Sing it, would you? I want you to listen to the words of the song. Come on. Come on, everybody, would you stand with us? Hallelujah. Your touch, your kiss, your grace to me. Yes, yes. Is deep. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Sing it. My soul. Thank you, Jesus. Morgan to pray in just a minute for you guys. But I have to say this. First of all, I want to thank you and those of you who are streaming for being bold 
and having the courage to say you want to experience this transformation that your faith journey offers you. I'll be the first to confess to you that I'm still in this transition. That every day as I live my life, God is changing me for the better. There's still some roughness that he's got to do in my life. Don't you ever let people and society make you think that it is abnormal for you to want to change. Jesus is the way, and if you take his way, it is going to change you. And it's going to be uncomfortable. Trust me, it's going to be uncomfortable. But it doesn't mean you're on the wrong path. I can tell you as a pastor, sometimes I've said, God, you know, I could have gone and done other stuff. Preaching is just not my only thing I can do. I didn't come to preaching because I want to be famous or it's a lot of money in there. <laughs> Don't believe that lie. Sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes I don't want to do this. <laughs> like, okay, I can't believe the pastor say that. Oh, Jesus. Remember what Paul said? I'm human. Sometimes I want to be like them folks streaming at home. <laughs> I just called you out. <laughs> but I'm thrust into this. Sometimes, you know, man, why, why, why I got to be this? But I realize this is the path that God has me on. And it's changing my flesh and to becoming more like him. Because at the end of the day, I have to give an account. You have to give an account to God of how you lived your life on the earth. Pastor, would you come and would you pray? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's so powerful, the reality, that as you stepped out uh, and left your chair, as left where you were sitting, that you have stepped from an old place yes. to a new place. Father God, we thank you. Just go ahead and stretch your hands out towards them. Yes. Lord God, we thank you that they have left the old and that they are stepping into the new. Lord God, that they left so much behind in their seats. Yes. Father God, that they let go of some things. You, Father God, we thank you for all of what they've let go, for all of what they've released, from all of what they've said they're not going back to. Father God, and we pray that your power, your spirit, that it would give them the courage to walk away from all of that and to walk into the new. Father God, encourage them now. Strengthen their hearts. Empower them, Father God, in this new season of their life, the best season of their life. Give them the courage, oh God. Uh, Father God, we've, we recognize that uh, Moses is dead. And now it is they yes. that have to walk out their faith, this faith walk. Yes. Yes. Like Joshua, we pray that the spirit of Joshua would fall upon them now. Yes. Father God, yes. and that they would have your courage to go through yes. all of the challenges. Lord God, to face an enemy. Yes. To face uh, the great walls of Jericho in their life. Yes, Father God, to face these uh, unbeatable obstacles that are yet in front of them. Lord God, we thank you that you give them the courage. Yes. The courage that you commanded Joshua to walk in yes. and the courage that you gave him. Oh. Father God, I pray now, Lord God, that uh, they would be who they were created to be, not ones yes. that are safe, thank you, Jesus. but those that are dangerous. Yes. Lord God, I declare over them now that they will no longer fight to be safe, but that they would walk in who you've created them to be, yes. those that are dangerous. I declare that you will no longer be safe, but you will be dangerous. Yes. Yes. In other words, you will become the answer. Yes. You, will become the, the, you will become the challenging one. You will become the trouble that the enemy was not looking for. 
that you will truly be a force to be reckoned with that you will be armed and you will be dangerous against your enemy and that as you are transformed you will transform your world that as you are transformed you will no longer be on the defensive but always on the offense that you will no longer be a victim but that you will be a victor Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. They came down for change and you are making them the change that the world needs. Thank you, Father, for your empowerment. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your favor. They came down for personal change and we can all see that their entire world will be changed. Give them the courage, therefore, to win and to become the answer to this world. We pray your blessings over them now. Uh, the fullness of your power, O oh God, and your spirit to walk in obedience and strength as they overcome the world by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.